Depression treatments can be tricky. Sometimes, no matter how hard you try, it feels like you're not making any progress. But what if the problem isn't the treatment itself? In this video, we're breaking down 10 common mistakes people make with depression treatments that might be holding you back. Hi everyone, my name is Matthias Hartman. I'm a board certified psychiatric physician assistant, and I make videos on how to improve your mood. Let's start with something you might not have heard of. L-methylfolate. It's the active form of folate, also known as vitamin B9, that helps your brain produce neurotransmitters like serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine. If you have low levels of methylfolate, your body struggles to make enough of these feel-good chemicals, which can worsen depression. Here's how it works. L-methylfolate helps create something called tetrahydrobiopterin, also known as BH4, which is a cofactor your brain needs to activate certain enzymes that produce serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine. A cofactor is something that is needed for something else to work. Without it, these enzymes just sit there twiddling their thumbs. These two enzymes include tyrosine hydroxylase and tryptophan hydroxylase. Think of it like you're trying to bake a cake without flour. L-methylfolate is the flour to your cake. If there's no L-methylfolate, then there's no monoamine neurotransmitters, AKA serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine. In fact, while it is of course helpful to check for blood levels of folate, and if it's low to replete it, even if your folate blood levels show a normal level, L-methylfolate might still work for your depression. And the reason why is because blood folate levels measure both folic acid and L-methylfolate. L-methylfolate is the active form of folate that the body uses and the form that can cross the blood-brain barrier to do things like increase serotonin and norepinephrine and dopamine. Folic acid, on the other hand, is a man-made form of folate that your body has to convert into the active methylfolate. But actually a lot of people have a genetic variant where they have a deficiency in the specific enzyme called MTHFR enzyme, which is what is needed to convert the folic acid into the methylfolate. Depression doesn't just happen in a vacuum. Sometimes it's your body trying to tell you something is wrong. Common culprits include low vitamin D, low vitamin B12 or folate, and low thyroid hormones, all of which can seriously impact your mood. Make sure to get these basic labs done if you haven't already. Sometimes correcting a deficiency is all it takes to feel better. Basic labs are important, but they might not tell the whole story. If your symptoms persist for a long time, or if you have treatment resistant depression, advanced testing could uncover hidden issues like amino acid imbalances, heavy metal exposures, or hormone abnormalities like checking testosterone, estrogen, and progesterone. Tests like amino acid blood levels, organic acid tests, hair mineral analysis, and saliva hormone testing can provide a deeper look into what might be going on behind the scenes. It's like looking under the hood of your car. The check engine light might not have all the details, but a deeper diagnostic can show you exactly what's going on. For example, when looking at amino acid breakdown, when the end result is serotonin, we start out with eating protein, which we then break down into tryptophan, which is an amino acid. This then gets converted by tryptophan hydroxylase, tri-O, into 5-HTP here. And this then gets converted into serotonin by the AAADC, the ar aromatic amion acid decarboxylase. And then we get serotonin. So if anything is off in this whole circuit here, if any of these cofactors aren't present, if these enzymes aren't active, then we're not going to be having enough serotonin moving around in the brain. Now, similar concept here in the dopamine pathway. We eat protein and then we break it down into phenylalanine, which is an amino acid. Phenylalanine that's get, then gets converted into L-tyrosine by phenylalanine hydroxylase, which is an enzyme, and you need all these cofactors as well to do this. Then from L-tyrosine, we convert that into L-dopa. As you see here, L-methylfolate is needed. Here is tyrosine hydroxylase, which is an enzyme that is needed. These are all cofactors here. L-dopa is then converted into dopamine by dopamine decarboxylase. And these are all the cofactors. This is the enzyme. Then dopamine is converted into norepinephrine, also known as noradrenaline, same thing, 
by dopamine B hydroxylase, and then uh, epinephrine is made as well. Now let's quickly go over the steroidogenic pathway, which is how steroids are made, like estrogen, which is what estradiol is, or testosterone. So you start off with cholesterol. You need cholesterol to make hormones. This turns into pregnenolone. Then you can go over in this pathway, progesterone. Then you get some of the cortisols here. See, these are the glucocorticoids here, this and this. And then you can go even further over here. Or if it goes down this way, DHEA then turns into 4-androstenedione, which then turns into testosterone, or it can turn into estrone, and testosterone can turn into estradiol. S-adenosylmethionine, also known as SAMI, is a naturally occurring compound in our body that plays a critical role in mood regulation. SAMI helps produce and regulate neurotransmitters like serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine through methylation. Research shows that SAMI can be effective as a standalone treatment or as an add-on to antidepressants, especially for people who haven't had much success with traditional medications. In fact, SAMI has been studied in over 50 clinical trials, some of which showed it worked just as well as a powerful antidepressant called tricyclic antidepressants. Interestingly, SAMI is dependent on B9 and B12 vitamins for it to work. SAMI, of course, can cause some side effects, but they are usually mild, and go away with time. One really important thing is that unlike regular antidepressants, SAMI doesn't cause any weight gain or any sexual side effects like low sex drive or difficulty with orgasm. So if those are two really big concerns of yours or if you'd strongly prefer natural treatments over a medication, then SAMI is something you have to know about. TMS is a cutting edge, non-invasive treatment that has been shown to help people with treatment resistant depression. And no, it doesn't involve shocking the brain. TMS uses magnetic pulses to stimulate nerve cells in parts of the brain responsible for mood regulation, especially in areas that are underactive in people with depression. It's not like an x-ray, there's nothing radioactive going on. It's more like an MRI, like a big magnet. Think of TMS as rebooting your brain's Wi-Fi. If the signal is weak, it's gonna be hard to stay connected. TMS helps boost the signal and get things flowing again. If antidepressants haven't worked for you, or if the side effects are unbearable, or if you just don't wanna take medication, TMS could be a great alternative. S-ketamine, known by the brand name Spravato, is a fast-acting antidepressant that works through a completely different mechanism than traditional antidepressants. While most antidepressants target serotonin, norepinephrine, or dopamine, S-ketamine works on the glutamate system in your brain. Specifically, it blocks NMDA receptors, which help reboot brain neuron connections. This can quickly improve symptoms of depression, sometimes within hours. Think of esketamine as the express lane of depression treatment. While other meds take weeks to start working, esketamine works fast, often within hours to days. It's especially helpful for people with treatment-resistant depression, and it's given under medical supervision as a nasal spray. Mistake number seven is not considering thyroid hormone, also known as T3. T3 plays a key role in energy regulation and metabolism, but it also impacts neurotransmitter activity in the brain, like serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine. T3 works for improving the effectiveness of antidepressants. One of the best things about T3 is that at doses used to improve mood, there's actually no side effects expected. And it also does not cause weight gain or sexual dysfunction. There is some worry that T3 might cause osteoporosis with long-term use, which is where the bones get weaker. But this is based on data where higher doses are being used for other reasons. At the low doses used for depression, osteoporosis has not been found to happen. Even if your basic thyroid labs are normal, treating with T3 still helps with depression. Sometimes the medications meant to help with some of your medical problems can actually make your depression worse 
or can cause a depression. Common offenders include certain blood pressure medicines, birth controls, or even some psychiatric medicines. The specific psychiatric medicine I mean are amphetamines, such as Adderall or Vyvanse. In some people, when the amphetamine medications wear off later in the day, or if someone takes the medicine every day for a while and then stops, it can cause them to feel down. So always keep an eye on your new symptoms after starting a medication and discuss them with your medical provider. It might be something as simple as switching between meds to feel better. Did you know that you can actually get blood levels of many different antidepressant medications? Yes, that's right. Usually at the two week mark, we like to see at least a 20% improvement in your mood when starting a medicine or when increasing a dose. And if we don't see that improvement, then we'll usually increase the dose. So what does increasing the dose do? Well, it increases that blood level of that medicine, meaning there's more of the medicine in your body. But if you can just increase the dose, why would you get a blood test? Well, if you're nearing the max dose of medication and you still haven't noticed improvement in your mood, we start thinking, why, what's going on here? And the reason why some people don't get better, even on the max dose of certain medicines, is because they are rapid metabolizers of certain medicines. A rapid metabolizer is someone that breaks down medication fast. If you break down the medication too fast, then there won't be enough of it in your body for it to work to improve your mood. So a blood level can sometimes be helpful if we're nearing the max dose, because we can see if you have an adequate amount of the medication in your body. If you have a super low blood level, then we've found our answer as to why the medication isn't working for you. There's not enough of it for it to work. The last mistake is not considering pharmacogenetic testing when treating your depression. Meta-analysis have shown that it gives you an 80% better chance of getting completely better, and the reason why is similar to mistake number nine. Pharmacogenetic testing looks at certain liver enzymes by which psychiatric medicines are broken down in the liver. And if you're a fast metabolizer, you break down these medicines really fast, so there's not gonna be enough of the medicine left in your body for it to do its work for your mood. So although it's definitely not perfect, getting pharmacogenetic testing to look at your genes and how they interact with certain medicines can be really helpful in your journey to improve your mood. So there you have it, 10 common mistakes people make when treating depression, and more importantly, how to avoid them. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more videos like this. If you enjoyed this video, you might like this video next on five reasons you shouldn't be afraid to take antidepressant medication for your mood. I'll see you over there.